Um, yeah, I don't have any of those like, you know, mechanical arm holder things that other people do, so that they don't have to hold their thing. And I don't want to unscrew the microphone from its stand, so. Ahoy is the latest game from Leader Games, where players will take control of competing pirate factions as they sail the high seas and try to become the most famous pirate who ever lived. This is the first video in a new series of guide videos where we're going to break down how you can play each of the three factions in Ahoy effectively. And so today, we're going to start this series with the smuggler faction. As the smugglers in Ahoy, you're going to be picking up and delivering cargo to different islands in the game, which will net you fame and additional rewards based on your reward map. Be careful though, because as the smugglers, you're in charge of the point tempo of the other two factions in the game, the Mollusk Union and the Bluefin Squadron. The more you deliver cargo, the more the regions in the map will be more wealthy, and the more points the Mollusk and Bluefins will make. So, as the smugglers, it's imperative that you keep up a constant momentum in order to keep up with the Mollusk and Bluefin squadrons. So you're going to want a constant steady trickle of fame, but also you're going to be wanting to pledge those cargo effectively in order for you to catch up in the late game scoring round. What this means is you're going to have direct control over the point tempo of the other two factions, which is good. It means you're in control of how long or how short the game is going to be which means the Mollusk Union and the Bluefin Squadron players are going to want your help directly in order for them to win. There's a lot of benefits for you in either harming or helping either of these two factions, and you can use this as a negotiating chip in the game in order to effectively smuggle your cargo. If you can't already tell, there's a lot to juggle as the smuggler player in Ahoy, so let's go ahead and get started on our guide. We've broken this guide into six sections. The setup, charting the seas, smuggling the bounty, the reward map, navigating the waters, and assembling your crew. Part 1. Setup. Alright, this part is pretty self-explanatory. At the start of the game, you can place your ship on any non-island square, so you actually get a little bit of freedom here in the setup phase. Here are our two recommendations. You could set up near an island with an instant smuggle slash recruit if you can. This is pretty explanatory, but in order to start up your delivery momentum as soon as possible, you'll want to identify any cards in the market deck that you can smuggle into your cargo hold on the first turn. Look for any islands in the first two tiles that match any of the market cards and place your ship close to that island. You could also set up near some early treasure game. If you can't smuggle on your first turn, it's not a bad idea to set up near a spot on the board with treasure. Gold is going to help you a lot in the game, and so getting your hands on some early might help you either score a good crew card before anyone else, or it might help you secure a good die value to take advantage of Tailwind or Full Sail quicker. Part 2. Charting the Sea The early game of Ahoy will see players mostly exploring the map and grabbing some early territory. This part of the game is crucial for the smuggler, as how the map ends up laying out will determine your smuggling paths between the islands. Here are things to keep in mind for this phase of the game. Try keeping all the islands within one to two spaces of each other when you explore. If you're the one exploring a tile, always try and get the islands within one to two spaces of each other. You can't put islands adjacent to each other, but you can get them within one to two spaces of each other by playing them diagonally to each other. This is useful to you because once you start picking up cargo, you want to try and make the journey between islands as small as possible, allowing you to hopefully make very fast deliveries later in the game. So keeping everything close is going to help you be more flexible later in the game. Figure out which island suit is not in play as soon as possible. So every game, one island tile is taken out of the game. There are two islands of each suit type in the game, which means one of the suits in the game is going to be harder to deliver to than others, as it only has one location. Figure out which island this is quickly, so you can avoid taking too much cargo that needs to be delivered there. You want to do this because delivering to islands that have two options as opposed to one allows you to be a lot more flexible when plotting a course to that island type. Part 3. Smuggling the Bounty The bulk of your strategy rests in being able to efficiently and quickly pick up and deliver cargo to the various islands in the game. Knowing how to synergize your dice actions, smuggling, and delivery is the key to a victorious game as the smugglers. You need a constant momentum, so always be moving. Because the Bluefin and Mollusk factions score points at the end of every round, you have to be delivering at least one cargo a round to keep up with them. This means you must always be moving. Playing the smuggler is all about maintaining a constant momentum of smuggling and delivering. A round where you don't deliver is a wasted round, so make sure you are always moving from one island to the next. Take full advantage of Tailwind and your full sail in order to traverse great distances if you have to. Double smuggle when you can. If you can set up a round where you can smuggle or hold two cargo cards of the same suit, do it. 
Sometimes this means stopping at an island to smuggle a card first before you go to deliver both of your cards. Always be on the lookout for double smuggle options. On the flip side, you now want to do a double delivery move when you can. So once you've double smuggled, rush to the island to deliver both of them ASAP. Grab your big point burst and then fill up your hold again. Because of the two cargo limit, double delivering is great, but make sure you can fill your cargo back up quickly so you can keep the momentum going. So because you want to keep up momentum, try and deliver to islands that have cards available to smuggle in the market deck. This allows you to keep up that momentum we keep talking about. Delivering a card and then immediately smuggling another card can sometimes let you deliver three to four times in a round if you set it up properly. Obviously, sometimes market cards won't always align like this, or sometimes someone recruits the card you wanted to smuggle before your turn. That's okay. Smuggling is about spotting these opportunities and capitalizing on them when they come up. This won't happen all the time, but keep your eye out so that you can seize the opportunities when they present themselves. Use harbors to load your cannons so as to prioritize constant movement. Because you should prioritize constant movement and momentum, we recommend that you don't waste an action loading your cannons. As a smuggler, combat does not help as consistently as it does the aggressive factions. Yes, there is the possibility of a reward, but at the cost of halting your momentum. If you do need cannons though, a great way to do this is by anchoring at a harbor to reallocate a die to your cannon slot. This allows you to take a move action and still be prepared for a fight. Part 4. The reward map. The reward map is its own little mini game you need to be aware of. Every time you deliver or win a combat, you can get a reward on this map. You can pick any adjacent square for a reward, so as long as it isn't the one you picked previously. This means you'll need to be picking efficient pathways through this map to get the really good rewards. Playing this map well goes a long way in helping you stay caught up with the mollusks and bluefins. So don't write this off. This needs as much thought as everything else. Be making your way to the fame squares, as you'll need those extra boosts. While delivering cargo is great and nets you a good amount of fame, it's not going to be enough to catch up to the mollusks and bluefins on its own. Because of this, when plotting a path through your reward map, try and maneuver towards those squares that will net you extra fame. This should help you catch up to the mollusks and bluefins. You can use movement squares to chain multiple deliveries in one turn. Keep an eye out for cheeky movement rewards that can let you do a second delivery action for free. You could potentially deliver a cargo to one island, then use the reward to move you to a a second island where you can drop off your second cargo. This is a rare instance, but a really cool maneuver if you can pull it off. Recruit squares are useful to snag a crew member of a suit that's out of the way. So since you'll be primarily smuggling cards instead of recruiting cards, the recruit reward squares are a great way to grab crew members onto your ship for free, allowing you to grab any card you want. You can use combat to move around your chart faster. So again, while we don't recommend combat a lot as the smuggler, you can use combat to snag a reward on your reward map which could allow for some cheeky plays, but more importantly, it could let you set up a better reward for yourself when you deliver next. Or it might allow you to free up a reward to take again. Do this sparingly though, as reckless combat can absolutely destroy your momentum as the smugglers. Part five, navigating the waters. As the smugglers, most new players will think that you have no presence on the board, but this is simply not true. You may only have one ship, but you control a lot of the important things that the bluefins and the mollusks need to win the game. Most importantly, you control their point tempo. The two factions will want to be on your good side. So using this to your potential and knowing how to handle the other two factions is a massive tool you need to navigate the waters safely. Table talk. You have a lot of power with the two war factions. As a smuggler, part of your strategy will be talking and dealing with the Mollusk and Bluefin players. This is because even though they have more board presence, you actually have more power over their game, making you as important to them as their rivalry with each other. This is because you control their point tempos. You get to increase the wealth of regions, netting them more points. This means you can use this as a negotiating chip between the two players, allowing them to free up pathways for you to your islands or forcing them to wait to load their cannons. You can get either of the players to help you if you know how to play your cards right and negotiate with them. Wait, you're loading your cannons? Oh, actually, if you hold off on that for a minute, I can actually go through your troops and deliver to that island that you control, and I can make the wealth four instead of three. So if you could just wait one more turn, then I could get more points for you. Keep the mollusks and sharks distracted with each other. One of the reasons you want to keep the mollusks and bluefins at equal point ranges is because you want them focused on fighting each other instead of trying to stop you. If they don't view you as more of a threat than the other war faction, then they are more willing to ignore you or even help you, allowing you to avoid combat and rush your deliveries faster. Part 6. Assembling your crew. Every player has the opportunity to recruit cards onto their ship giving them a nice stack of extra abilities that can either boost their strengths or cover up their weaknesses. Even though as the smuggler, you'll be paying more attention to the cargo section of the cards, don't underestimate the boost that crew members can give you on your smuggling quest. Prioritize gold, movement, and board control crew cards. 
So when looking for crew members to help your delivery engine in the game, we recommend that you look for three types of cards. Gold cards, movement cards, and board control cards. Gold cards help you get more gold, which will give you more control over your dice and future recruitments, as well as boosting your ability to win the gold tiebreaker if you tie for the lead. Movement cards can help you move around quicker, allowing faster delivery times, but also it will let you sink damage tokens into your sail slots, which lets you keep your other more important slots undamaged. And finally, board control cards will help you police the mollusks and bluefins in the early to mid game, while also allowing you better control of securing your pledges in the late game. The key gold cards that we like are Cut Purse, Elder, Diver, Trawler, Documentarian, and Merchant. The key movement cards that we like are Sailor, Ghostly Gust, Trawler, Barrel Man, Sea Witch, Whispering Wind, and Pilot. And then the board control cards are Convincing Official and Convincing Comrade. And that's the video on the Smugglers, guys. We hope y'all enjoyed this video, and we hope it helps you guys win more games as the Smugglers and your games of Ahoy. Make sure you guys subscribe so you get the other two guides in our Ahoy series, as well as videos on other games like Six Siege or Nemesis, Eclipse, that sort of thing. Until next week, see ya.